Let What's up, guys? Welcome see. back hey, to the house. channel. Oh, uh, let the people see this. Okay, let the people see this right here. Wow. <laughs> 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 Welcome back to the channel. Uh, here with Andrew, star of the show. If you watched the last video, uh, he hit it out of the ballpark as uh, Andrew Polk, I think. Uh, we're gonna. Hey, have yeah, you had, you had black hair, yeah. Uh, we'll have lots more videos like that on the channel. I think the plan going forward for the channel is to do kind of every other week, do a video with the kids acting, and uh, definitely we'll have Andrew Polk in the mix a bit, but he's gonna be doing some other things that I th have planned that I think are gonna be pretty funny and enjoyable. So hopefully you guys like that format. Uh, for this week's video, we're gonna be doing the Play Every Hand Challenge live again. Um, what game do we just play? We played Dreidel. Yeah. With poker chips. With poker chips, yes, we did play dreidel with poker Watch chips. Watch this. Ah, okay, all right, you're gonna, you're gonna leg drop me there. All right, so, <laughs> this, this past weekend I was trying to mix the Play Every Hand Challenge in there somewhere at the casino, but uh, we had a cheer competition this weekend in Trenton for the girls, Saturday and Sunday, so it was kind of hard to do that. So today, I have a couple hours here after my regular poker session for the day, where I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go over to Harris Chester. I wanna kinda go to different venues for each time I do the Play Every Hand Challenge. So I'm gonna head over to Harris Chester, Harris Philadelphia, whatever you wanna call it. Um, play a few hours, but then I have the Sixers game tonight, so head over to the Sixers game after that. Also, I have been filming, uh, I have been streaming on Twitch, the Play Every Hand Challenge on Twitch, playing 25 cent, 50 cent, no limit, six sessions in the book so far, and have won all six sessions and up something like $530. The goal is to win $1,000 to donate to charity. And we are already over halfway there. There's been a ton of, there's been a ton of amazing highlights. You can actually go to the Twitch channel and watch all the replays there. All right. Hold. We got him, guys. We got him, guys. We got him. Oh, I wish I could celebrate loudly with Andrew. That's how you play the do seven, guys. <laughs> Can't even celebrate because I got a kid sleep in my arms. Uh, I have already done this once before so far, playing it at the casino. I went to the Sugar House in uh, a previous <coughs> vlog. I'll link to that up here or somewhere. Well, uh, the Sugar House is where you eat candy. <laughs> no, I think, didn't we establish that it was a poker place or a, a casino and a poker room? <laughs> uh, but we have, done one, we have done one Play Every Hand Challenge live so far. I lost $282 on that challenge. All right, so I'm gonna head over to Harris, hopefully win some money for a charity playing every single hand and get some good footage. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. So if you guys are not familiar with the play every hand challenge, the way it works is that I have to play every hand dealt in unless there is an all in or a three bet in front of me, uh, which doesn't really happen too often it seems live in these stakes. So I'm play pretty much playing every hand and uh, trying to win money obviously uh, with the intention of donating half the money to charity. So actually this is where I need your guys help. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what goal I should set uh, to reach before I donate the money to charity. I'm gonna post a, a poll on Twitter if you guys wanna uh, go ahead and vote on that poll, or just leave in the comments below here what you think the amount should be. I think the goal will be either $2,000 uh, or $5,000, or if you guys have a, something else that you have in mind, $2,000 or $5,000 seem like the number to decide between for me. Uh, but uh, interested to hear what you guys think for the goal. All right, so I get up to Harris. For some reason, uh, their cage is shut off. I think there was some kind of water main break or something, so you have to go all the way upstairs to get the chips. When I came back down and had my name on the list, there was a, uh, a couple one twos and a couple one threes running. Uh, I put my name on both lists. Ideally, I wanted to get into one three game as it, I think it plays a little bit deeper and there's a little bit more money on the table. Um, but ultimately, a new one two opened up and I took a seat there. It was a $60 minimum buy in, $300 maximum. I buy in for $300. And uh, the table is uh, full of very old people which is not surprising. It's about 4.30 uh, on a Monday. I think when the game started, I was the youngest at the table, probably by 
20 years at least, maybe maybe more than that. It was pretty ridiculous. And mostly shorter stacks, so I wasn't very, very optimistic about how things would go. Uh, when the session started, I was in the sixth seat. That was the only seat that was open, and I actually wasn't able to get a good angle uh, from that seat to, to record whole cards. So I was looking for an opportunity to switch seats. I, I won some pots early on with a few bluffs here and there, uh, but eventually, uh, about 20 minutes in, I moved over to the eighth seat as that seat had opened up, which actually gave me direct position on a player who I then ended up getting into a lot of pots with. Uh, and then I stack him on this hand with ace queen all in pre flop. Uh, I don't know what he had. And he eventually moves over to the two seat from that seat and rebuys. I mean, if you play any live poker, you can see how this is, is going. You know, I've won these pots from him. He had moved his seat. I had moved my seat initially, not to get position on him, but so I could actually film these hands. Uh, but you can see that he's the type of guy that was going to take this personally. And uh, it was going to involve the two of us being in a lot of pots. And you could just feel it at the table. Everyone else is folding pretty much every hand. Uh, and I knew, I felt pretty confident that he was going to try to win a big pot for me. Um, and obviously I'm in every hand, so he's going to have a chance. So it all builds up to this spot here. We open uh, in the cutoff with King-8 offsuit. He makes the call in the small blind and the big blind calls as well. And we get a dream flop of King-8-4 rainbow. So we flop top two uh, against an opponent who is really trying to win a big pot from us. Uh, they checked me. I bet $10, which is a third pot bet, which is... a what I'd be doing with most of my hands on this board that I'm continuing. Uh, he makes the call on the big blind also calls. The turn card's an offsuit five. It's a completely Badugi board. And uh, they check to me. I bet $30. Uh, again, just trying to get calls from the weaker parts of their ranges. Uh, and he quickly raises the $200. And big blind folds. And now it's on us. And this is just a really tough spot, I think. Um, you know, we have a guy who is clearly out for us, uh, who is playing 100% of hands also. Um, so, you know, I don't think he had, he's going to have too many bluffs, but I also don't know what this guy's capable of at all in the sense that I don't know if he can show up with a hand like King-Queen or Ace-King or Aces or uh, many other two-pair combinations. Like, in-game, I was thinking two-pair was probably one of his most likely combinations. Uh, a hand like King-5 would make a lot of sense, or 4-5, 8-5, uh, all of those hands are definitely obviously within his range. He's also playing the 100% strategy 
as I am. Um, and I think that he would likely raise those hands and probably a big sizing as well. So uh, tough spot in general, just because in live poker, people tend to not go crazy in this spot. And honestly, if, if there hadn't been this kind of dynamic here, I'd probably just fold. Uh, but as played, he only has $100 behind. And I decided to call only because I'm going to call all rivers, but I prefer to just call and then call river and not have to show my hand. When I made the call on the turn, my I was using the chips to hold up my camera to get the footage and I had to put most of my chips in the pot. So the, you see the camera flip up here and you can see my facial reaction for those the hand, which I don't even know if you'll enjoy watching, but I'll put it in here um, for the river being the king of clubs. And uh, he shoves dark and obviously I make the call uh, and hopefully you can hear what he says here. But there was a lot more after this and I actually, I don't know that I got it on camera or that you could hear it. Um, but I'll play some of, some of the clips of what he said basically for the next hour and a half. I was actually on the list for the 1-3 game and a seat opened up prior to this and I had asked what seat it was. It was a six seat and I didn't want to take that because um, I didn't want to not be able to get footage. So I stayed at the 1-2 and so he actually mentioned after this hand uh, that if I had gone up to 1-3 there's no chance that I would ever win there. I could never beat any any poker game basically is I think what he was saying. Uh, definitely could have beat the 1-3 game. Uh, so. And now for me, you know, like this is really tough for me because I'm actually a really non-confrontational person. So my general reaction to these things is to kind of just laugh and smile. Um, and I don't, I'm not like in there crap talking with them or like, you know, look how much money I make, you know, like I, that's not my personality. So, uh, <laughs> uh, or like challenging them to heads up matches or anything like, you know, so I'm just laughing at them. And I think that actually pissed them off more uh, because I wasn't, allowing myself to react to him. You know, I'm just, I'm just laughing at him because uh, I think it's funny. Um, and I still think it's funny. And the, the rest of the table thought it was funny too, which was pretty great too. So if you've played live poker before, you know how this is going to end up. Uh, the next hour and a half of him berating me uh, included the two of us essentially playing heads up while everyone else watched. Uh, I'm obviously playing 100% of hands, so I'm not going anywhere. And he's not playing 100% of hands because he's stuck 600 bucks now and steaming his brains off. It's unfortunate that he moved the two seat because now I'm playing every pot out of position against him. Um, but you know, I had to do my best to uh, to stay in there. And basically, over the last next hour and a half, you'll see we just went back and forth. I would win some pots, he'd win some pots. Not playing uh, too many huge ones. So, and hand comes up where he straddles under the gun. Under the gun one calls. I make it twenty dollars in the small blind with pocket queens. Uh, he's the only caller, and we take the flop heads up. It's six five three with two diamonds. Um, not the best flop and I think I do better checking a lot. So I end up checking and he bets very quickly, he bets $30. Uh, I make a call looking for some good turn cards, uh, to keep putting money in. Turn card's a seven, offsuit seven though. Not the best turn card here. And I check and he very quickly bets $50. Um, I don't want to get, I don't want to go too much into things, but I felt pretty confident uh, folding this spot here. Obviously I'm playing every hand with the guy. So I have a, pretty good read on what he's doing in spots. And so I felt pretty confident with my fold here. So I just go ahead and fold. Final hand of note here. Uh, I, the under the gun player opens to $10. The under the gun player opens to $10. I call with Jack six offsuit on the button and our friend calls in the big blind. The flop comes down Jack 10, three with two diamonds in the spade. They check to me. I go ahead and bet $15. I think I'm gonna have the best hand a ton here. And I think uh, at these stakes you do really well just betting uh, for value and protection. And if anybody raises, you can just fold in these spots. Uh, so I got him at $15 and both players call. The turns the seven of spades, bringing backdoor spades. Uh, they checked me, I'm gonna go ahead and keep betting and I bet $30 and they both call again. Um, 
And we get a three of spades river, so the backdoor flush completes. They checked me, I don't really see too much value in betting, so I go ahead and just check, and I show down my hand and I'm good. Uh, and it's one of the last hands I get to play. Thank you. Racked up, ended up winning $378. So after the $282 loss from the first session, that means we are up $96 so far, over two sessions. All right, guys, we're outside here at Harris, Philadelphia, and I can't stop laughing. Uh, I just finished up the session, wrapped it up. It was fun and profitable and uh, just a ridiculous experience. I mean, you know, like I said in the last video, I don't play much live poker, but, uh, and playing this one, two game was ridiculous. I felt like I was, I, I don't even know. It was just crazy. There, there were some funny people there. You don't smoke what I smoke. Maybe you do, I don't know. There's people falling asleep at the table who've been there gambling in the, in the pits for days. You know I should've taken the hell out of here, man. Three days straight in a row. Can't get, it, can't get it right, man. And then you got the guy who's on tilt who uh, I four outed and he berated me nonstop. I do just want to throw in here real quick that although this guy was giving me a hard time for that hand, uh, he wasn't like really mean spirited by any means. Uh, there's definitely been way worse people in live poker uh, really getting out of line. And you know, this guy was just talking about the hand over and over again. And and I get it, like, you know, he lost a, a brutal hand, he lost a bunch of hands into me, to me in a row, and he lost a bunch of money at the time. So I can get, definitely get being tilted. Uh, but uh, you know, obviously trying to belittle your opponent's play, is not something I usually get behind. Uh, so, you know, to each their own. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the actual footage here. I'm gonna keep working to get better at it. I, I've decided that I need to have someone with me when I'm doing this from now on because it's really, really hard to take the footage at the table and take notes on the hands and be able to play every single hand dealt in. I mean, I'm literally involved in all the action every time. So it's gonna be a work in progress. Gonna keep doing it for the Play Every Hand Challenge. All right guys, so thanks as always for checking out the channel and the videos. The kids the kids will be back next week uh, with another video Hi. for you guys to look out for. Uh, that guy right there will be a star once again, I'm sure. Uh, I think maybe the fame is going to his head a little bit too much, so we'll see. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment down below, give us a big thumbs up. Bye! See ya. Go at, and look at um, RaisingTheNuts.com. RaisingTheNuts.com. We don't have that yet, but we probably should get that soon, huh? <laughs>